God, I hate this chair. Plex is awesome and everything, but if you really want to squeeze the most features out of your Plex media server, you can get a Plex Pass. Now, while there are many benefits to having a Plex Pass versus a free user account, my favorite one is getting early access to new features that Plex has not yet released to the general public. So if you're like me and you want to try out those new features, check out the description down below. Down there, you can either purchase a Plex Pass for yourself or a friend, and hey, if you don't have a free account, use my link as well. It helps me out. So check out the description down below to get your Plex Pass today. What's up YouTube, Jason here with Jason Bites Back, episode number 19. And yes, I have a new chair that I'm going to use. Let's, I think you can see it. I'm gonna use this chair possibly, potentially for all future videos, even though I do not endorse said chair. If you guys follow me on Twitter, you probably know the story behind it, but I got this chair, I actually uploaded a video of the unboxing. I got this chair and I was so excited to finally get a new computer chair because I need one so badly. Really excited to get this Need for Seat Maxonomic Quadro Scepter something something pro, whatever. Uh, it's such a letdown, honestly. I mean, I'm just, it's uncomfortable, you know? If I sit down in this thing for less than like five or 10 minutes, I mean, it's good. Just the padding on it is horrible. And after like an hour or two, things start going numb. But anyways, moving on and Jason Bites Back, as always, I answer questions from previous videos. I always start off with the last Jason Bites Back video. So if anybody has any questions for next month's video, definitely post them in the comments down below. And as always, you will find a complete list of all of my awesome Patreon subscribers at the end of this video because they are awesome. They support my channel. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome. That was like three awesomes. Worth it. You know, today actually kind of sucked. I went to bed early last night. I didn't have any beer or anything. And I was like, I want to wake up early. I want to make a productive day. I had at least three videos planned to work on, two of which I wanted to complete. Body disagreed. 9 a.m. came around and uh, woke up with a headache and a stuffed up nose. And my body felt like I was sick. So I laid in bed till one o'clock. That was horrible. And I have this thing. I've been really excited for this, like being able to remotely control your garage. A lot of newer houses like built within the last couple of years, or maybe even older, already have this built in if they have a, like a high enough garage door opener, high end garage door opener. But I want to be able to like control the garage Wi-Fi wise. Not that I have a ton of need for it, but there's been a few times. So I wanted to install this. It's a little bit more than just, you know, stick it on a wall and program it. It's like a little bit more involved. I wanted to install this today, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to that. I have to edit this video and then shoot some B-roll of some other stuff that I've been putting off. Mainly this, this 4K PoE network video recorder. I've been wanting to, you know, or they sent me this and I wanna do a review on it and get it hooked up, start testing it, but I've been putting that off too. And I have a dome camera, PoE dome camera from Amcrest that I need to work on too. So I got a lot of stuff that I wanted to do today, but now not a lot of time to do it. But either way, to steal a phrase from Jay's Two Cents, I digress. Let's jump right into the questions. The first one being from The Justinist. Did I say that right? The Justinist. Are you going to do another live stream on New Year's Eve? I had a blast last year taking shots with you. Oh man, that was brutal. I'll tell you what, the hangover on that was just brutal. But to answer that question, probably not. Um, I think New Year's falls on a Tuesday. I, I think it might've fell on a Monday last year. So it really depends on whether or not I'm gonna have that day off from work. If I have the, the, the first off from work, then, you know, maybe. I don't know, the problem is I open myself up for failure because I'm like, hey, you, I think last year I did $5 and I'd chug a beer, which backfired very quickly on me, you know? And, you know, <laughs> I don't know, let's just leave it to, there's a 50-50 chance, I'll say that, 50-50. That hangover is brutal. Number two, from Web Studios. He says, what mic do you use for your videos? Well, Mr. Web Studios, if you check the description on all of my videos, I have a complete list of all the hardware that I use for every video. But to answer your exact question, I don't know the model number of it, but I do use a Sennheiser shotgun microphone. Uh, it's an awesome microphone, although I, I think it costs like a thousand dollars. So it's kind of expensive, kind of pricey. For my old microphone, it was a shotgun from is the NTG2 from Rode. That was a pretty good microphone, and 
going from a $400 to a $1,000 microphone, I don't know if it was totally worth it. Both of them are great, but the Sennheiser definitely sounds better. And I'm looking over there because now I use the Rode mic on my camera to sync up my audio with my audio recorder. So I'm, technically I use them both. Next question is from Dark Master Chief. What do you think about Cody? Well, Dark Master, I actually do not use Cody on a daily basis. Uh, I pretty much rely on Plex for everything. And when it comes to like consuming media, I still use my Xbox One. Um, it's all because of the remote. I love the remote for the Xbox One and I tried Flirk and I couldn't get it to work 100%. It function. Anyways, long story short, I still use Xbox One. Uh, I use the Plex app on that and I use the Plex web interface to watch TV shows like on my computer if I'm doing other stuff or just watching TV on my computer. So really, I don't use Kodi or anything on a daily basis. However, I have used the Kodi app uh, like on some tests with like Intel Nux, like the Zools, the little miniature PCs with the Plex app installed on it. And even in my testing, utilizing like the Flirk little add-on USB thing and the Xbox remote, it ran really great. I don't have any complaints. The only thing I can say is that I just loaded Kodi and then loaded the Plex plug into it and then auto-booted, well, that's annoying. Then I auto-booted auto -booted Plex through Kodi. So I like bypassed the whole point of Kodi. So I'd hate to give my opinion on something that I don't use very often. Don't have anything against it, but Plex, the transcoding feature of Plex to me is why I gravitate towards Plex. So next question is from Catfish911. I'm thinking of getting a real link system, but I have a couple of questions you may be able to answer. Cliff notes I want to have a wired, some cameras wireless on others. Is it possible to have a combination of both? I'm thinking right now for four cameras outside and four cameras and having two of them outside pan and zoom capable. Well, I'll focus on your wired and wireless. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I have a combination of wired and wireless, although personally I use Blue Iris. And when it comes to real link cameras, and this is consistent across all of my real link cameras, they work with Blue Iris. They're very easy to work with Blue Iris, but they don't always stay connected. Like all of my real link cameras have these intermediate connection issues with the Blue Iris NVR software specifically. And I would not be worried about combining, you know, Wi-Fi with wired. Obviously, wired is always going to be better. There's no argument there. I'm not going to argue for wireless being better than wired, but sometimes you can't always wire all of your cameras. So go for it if you have to. The only thing I would recommend here is to make sure you have a good router. If you're feeding four or more cameras into a, a wireless router, you're gonna notice some slowdown, possibly if you have a very low end router. Personally, I have a TP-Link C5400 I've had for years. It has been a great uh, wireless router. It has three bands, two five gigahertz, one 2.4 gigahertz, and I have basically only wireless cameras on the 2.4. Everything else utilizes one of two of my five gigahertz bands. I keep it that way, that way nothing else on the network is going to slow down the communication with the 2.4 uh, gigahertz devices. So I personally dedicate an entire band to that. I take that back. I have like some plugs and light switches on 2.4, but it's only devices that are just connected all the time and, and doing stuff like cameras or smart connection stuff. Next question is from Jerry Shuggers. I shucked about a dozen of these Seagate three terabytes a few years ago. I had 75% failure rate. <sighs> yeah, it's because he went with Seagate. Okay, cheap shot. I am a long time Western Digital fan. A long time ago, I had Seagates fell on me and multiple Seagates fell on me. So that burned me and has put a bad taste in my mouth that I still carry over to this day. I have no idea if the new Seagate drives are any more reliable than the old ones but it's one of those I'm stuck in my ways. So I am a WD fan through and through until proven otherwise, because all of the drives that I put in my server, I've never had a new Western Digital drive fail. In fact, when I was switching over to Unraid, I was running like the parity rebuilt, I forgot what it's called, pre-clear. I was running pre-clear on a bunch of drives and I had three Western Digital drives, four terabyte drives that showed bad sectors. I sent them in for warranty, got new ones, so I, I think I just jumped the gun. I found bad drives before I had a failure rate. So that helped me a lot. But since then, I haven't had any issues, bad drives, bad sectors, failures. Knock on wood, WD's been really good for me. So I think that's probably why I shuck these drives. 
I think that's why though I shuck those drives. I know that the those easy store drives only come with two year warranties here in the United States. It does not void my warranty if I shuck them. So I'm okay with that just because I've had really good experience with Western Digital. Next question is from Steven. Really? We still don't know if these drives have the power pin issue? Question mark. I picked this because yeah, I didn't actually address that. I should have because I swapped it into my Unraid server and the backplate that I use does not deliver the 3.3 volt pin to the drive and resetting that drive. And the answer is yes, you do, at least probably most of the time. And I say that from two sources. One, all over the internet, people talk about these shuck drives. You have them do the 3.3 uh, volt pin mod in order to get them to work with a regular power supply and a regular PC. And two, and I actually recorded this, I have not edited or uploaded it because I thought the video didn't have a bunch of substance, but I did put the uh, one of those drives into a regular computer and it would not be recognized by Windows 10. It would not boot up. It just it didn't work. So I used the same exact SATA cable and the power cable with a regular red drive and it booted right up. In fact, I was hot swapping it over and it worked perfectly. But with the shuck drives, it did not. But the reason why I thought the video didn't have any substance is because all I did was test it out to see if it booted up and then I put it into my Unraid server and it did boot up rather than actually going through and, and modifying the 3.3 volt pin because I was going to use it in Zeus. I had no reason to modify it. So to answer your question, yes, I did have to do the mod. No, I did not do the mod. So I don't know. There you go. Next question is from Ant Thompson. I don't get why people in your comments don't like you. I picked this one because it's funny to me. And there's actually a secret here. If people don't like you, but they tell you, it's just as good as if they do like you. It's weird. Pretty much on YouTube, and I'm not an expert, but if you have any kind of engagement, like people post and say like, you're stupid, you're an idiot, why'd you do this? And they dislike your video, that's basically the same thing as same level of engagement as posting saying they love you and they like your video. But honestly, I mean, you look at videos that have, you know, hundreds of thousands of dislikes, hundreds of th uh, thousands of likes, and they could be trending and stuff like that. I mean, it's just engagement. So I thrive on both the hate and the love. And I know that a lot of hate comes from me posting videos that, you know, completely broadcasting and displaying my ignorance on a subject. And I'm okay with that. It does not bother me when people hate me for it. I feed off that. So if you're gonna, if anyone out there wants to get on YouTube and they're expecting not to get hate, you're gonna be disappointed. Everything you do is gonna be like a 50 50 split. People are gonna love you for it or they're gonna hate you for it. Doesn't matter. As long as they tell you, it's good for you. So embrace it. Next question is from Doug Fox. Why Unraid over FreeNAS? This could be a video for you. Possibly. I feel like I do a lot of the same things as you, but I use FreeNAS. Just curious for the differences. Just curious the differences. Okay. This is actually a question I get a lot on Twitter and in other comments. People ask, why didn't you choose X, you know, file system over this file system? And I always say the same thing. And I, I don't know if I've said it or addressed it in one of my Jason Bytes back videos before, but it all comes down to usable drive space and accepting the level of parity and or risk with said drive space. So let's use FreeNAS as example. Um, let's say I have six drives, right? And they're all four terabytes and whatever that, that equates to in space. If I have six drives, I have to use one of those drives to get the rest of the five drives parity, right? For uh, Z1 parity. So I have one drive protection for six drives. But with FreeNAS, there's there's a limit, and I don't know what it is, but you can only go up to so many drives for like one parity drive. Maybe you can expand it more, but really you're not gonna have like 24 drives with one hard drive in for parity. That's just not a FreeNAS thing, as far as I know. And even if you were, let's say you build, you know, 12 drives with one parity drive. What if you want to add on another drive? Well, you have to you create a whole new like array, right? So you, you can't just expand your 12 drive into a 13 drive. You can't do that. It's not, it's not how FreeNAS works. You cannot expand on top of it. Not to mention on FreeNAS, all 12 of those drives have to be the same size. So they all have to be four terabytes, eight terabytes, 10 terabytes, whatever. So if I want to add on to it, or if I want to have a bigger array, I have to add more parity drives. Next thing you know, I have like five parity drives to feed my file system. And that's five drives versus the two drives I have now, drastically reducing the amount of hard drive storage that I have available based off of the hard drives that I have. And that's not even considering the, the, the limitation of not being able to expand that array as I wish, just throwing in new drives. Like for example, this Black Friday, I threw in three 
new hard drives into the parity or into the array, and it was easy. So now let's talk Unraid, where you have one, or in my case, two parity drives that covers the entire array. An array that is mixed of four, eight, and 10 terabyte drives, and I can add on to that anytime I want to, assuming I have the space in my server to do so. That's awesome. I can add on, I can mix, and I have two drives that protect my entire array. I mean, how do you pass that up? Yes, there's a downside of speed. When I write to it, it's pretty slow. I mean, past my cache drive. But when I write to it, it's like 30, 40 megabytes a second. It's slow. It doesn't have the speed or always on of the free NAS file system. But to me, that's fine. Because to me, I only rely on it to store media files and also some backups you know, storage of like wedding files and YouTube files and stuff like that. But I don't rely on it for anything that is speed intensive. So it works perfectly for me. And I know that if I were to, let's say, have six drives with a free NAS system and I had two parity drives for that system, technically only having four drives worth of usable space with two drives to back them up is a lot safer than having, let's say, 24 drives with two drives to back them up. I, I get that it's a lot more safer with free NAS. But I accept that risk because in the end, if you have, let's say, a free NAS you know, array and you have six drives, one parity drive, one of those drives goes down, you replace it and you're rebuilding it. And during the rebuild, another one goes down, you lose the entire array. It's all gone because you only had one drive to back up everything. Whereas if you have Unraid and you have a 24 drive array with two drives to back them up and you lose two drives and you go to rebuild them and then you lose a, th a third drive, well, you only lost what's on those three total drives. All of the rest of your drives still store data individually, and it's not like white against all of the drives. So the way the parity works is you're only going to, you're going to have a minimal loss pretty much. I feel like that's a long winded half-ass explanation, but that's, that's the answer. Hopefully it's good enough. Next question is from David. Why didn't you add the 10 terabyte to an empty slot and select it as a parity? parity drive in the first slot. Does position matter or was it just to keep your parity drives in the known location? That's exactly what it is because going in, I didn't know for sure which drive was which. I knew that I kept it in one of those top slots, but I wasn't 100% sure. But my first guess was right and that's the one that I thought. So I wanted to keep the drive location physically in the same location because I was using those two slots for my parity drives. That's exactly it. No other reason besides that. Next question is from Zinaha. I think that's how you say it. Zinaha. How do you make yours, in case my server, say Zeus in the top left instead of the default that shows the version number? What he's talking about is my Unraid screen, my graphic user interface, my web interface. I have a graphic that shows Zeus and some other stuff. And honestly, it's kind of cheap the way I did it, but in, in Unraid, you can replace the top graphic with whatever you want. So I designed my own, uploaded that, and then I used ad blocker to block what was shown their default, like the little CS, C, CSS, like data blocks. I just blocked them like they were ads. I, I, I do that just for videos, just for me. So if I were to log into that with any computer that doesn't have those, you know, like blocks blocked out, then it would just show that on top of the graphics that I uploaded. Cheesy, but hey, it works for video. The next question is from Polo, Polo75. Don't you have to pre-clear? It's been a while. I didn't install a new hard drive in my Unraid tower. Well, to answer your question, when it comes to Unraid, yes, you're supposed to pre-clear. Do as I say, not as I do. I suffer from this thing called impatience and bad practice. It has not backfired on me too much yet, actually really at all. Um, yes, all of those drives I put into my uh, Unraid server, I should have pre-cleared, but there are two reasons. One, I was in a hurry, I wanted to get it done, I was like impatient, <laughs> and it takes like three days to do a thorough pre-clear on those 10 terabyte drives, which is crazy. Uh, two, the last time I tried to pre-clear a drive, I was using 6.5, the version for Unraid 6.5, and they hadn't fixed the pre-clear plugin yet, so I couldn't get it to run. So uh, even though I tried to pre-clear another one after I've you know installed all these drives and everything and it did work because I guess they updated the, the plugin itself, at the time that I originally tried it, it didn't work. So when I came up to all these new drives, I was like, ah, it doesn't work anyways, who cares? Just throw caution to the wind. It hasn't backfired on me yet, but Yes, you should. No, I didn't. Yes, I should have. And that is all the questions for today. Guys, thank you again for watching my channel. Thank you to all my Patreon subscribers for subscribing. Again, you are awesome. Thank you.
Like I said, if you have any questions that you want featured in next month video, post them down in the comments below. I always check that video first before checking the rest of the comments on my channel. So you have the best opportunity or possibility of having your question answered if you post it in this video below. So thank you to everyone. Like and subscribe and have yourself a good night after watching all the Patreon names at the end of this video. Okay, this video took 30 minutes to record, 29 minutes, 35 seconds. And I am already uncomfortable. Like my butt's kind of numb, like my back's kind of starting to hurt. You know, granted I was sitting like this, so it's not the same thing, but you know, I just, I don't know. I don't like this. Oh God, again. I don't know. I think I'm gonna make a full video on this chair. What sucks is that I got a custom logo. I can't return it, $420, the run out the window. So I have to use it for videos. I have to use it for something because otherwise it is just gonna sit and collect dust. And yes, I have a steak sitting on my table. I chose to not address that the entire video on purpose. I don't know why, but I'm gonna eat the shit out of the steak tonight. It's technically falling out. It's been doing that for a few hours now. I am so hungry right now. <laughs>